been a while since we made an update about these little friends and the chicken yard. Uh, today we've got a day that is, it's certainly icy and kind of gnarly, but it's not too, too bad. And we're gonna be getting a cold snap here pretty soon down into the single digits. So I wanna get things organized and prepped for them so that the compost system continues to function even as we get frigidly cold and that their needs are met and that compost continues to happen. So let me share some notes with you folks. First thing I should say is overall, these hens are happy and healthy. We've had two pass away out of our 80 some odd, uh, but that's keeping in mind that we have hens that are somewhere, but some of them, maybe 20 plus, 30 plus are over six or seven years old. So it's hard to say, uh, but more likely than not, it's old age and just the stress of cold. Those little white friends there and over there, those are the babies that we got earlier uh, in the season, well, later fall, early winter. And they are doing quite well. None of those have passed away. They're all thriving. They're certainly not laying eggs yet, but they're a little young for that. And you can see it's a little bit of a mess over here. I'm gonna explain in more detail, but you can see there's some leaf bags and burlap sacks which I'll talk about in more detail, but that's a way for us to preserve some warmth in the rough sketch of compost that's queued up on the outside of this winter run. So a lot of you folks that watch this channel regularly are familiar with this. I just came up with an idea the other day. I think I may actually upgrade this to a free carport that we found, a neighbor was getting rid of, that is 12 feet wide. So this is seven and a half feet wide and 16 feet long and this metal frame structure that a, a neighbor gave us is five feet wider so we could come all the way out to here and it's 20 feet long so we can go another four feet in that direction i don't think we can come anymore this way so maybe it'll be an update video soon where i build that structure up and over this get a poly skin up and over that and then take this apart from the inside we'll have to see um common issue that we come up against every single year is this system works amazingly well overall for generating lots of compost, giving a really comfortable spot for the hens. Uh, but I'm a six foot tall person and you can see if I don't bend down, that's where my head height is. So I have to bend down to get into here. Ladies, ladies, calm down. And I'm hunched over to make it into this. And as we get down to five degrees Fahrenheit, zero degrees Fahrenheit. The only way we're going to have thawed compost is if there is a huge volume, if there is at least, you know, two or three feet deep and equally wide. Um, and so that is a necessity. So either we can figure out getting more and more comfortable crunching in. You can see if I come down to grade just how much volume there is. Hey, Mrs. Lady. There's lots in here, a bunch of yards. Um, so an upgrade in more space would be nice, but I will say, if we could only have this uh, four cattle panel high tunnel as our winter run in the future, I wouldn't be sad about it. Uh, and for folks that are in slightly more mild climates than central New York, it works really, really well for creating compost uh, in the winter months. So let me set up a tripod and dig into this so you can see what's actually happening in here. So just for context and reference, this is outside. And I think if I were to kick a few inches down below the ice crust, I could get to soil that's not completely frozen, but it is definitively winter vibes out here, very little going on for the hens. And the high tunnel here is about eight feet away. Let's dig into there and see what's going on. Part of the fun of it too is not only is it hard to get in through the door with the amount of compost that there is, but the hens are not scared at all, which is lovely. It's good to have them not feel scared but there's barely any room to get the hay fork in. Excuse me, Mrs. Ladies. The first stuff right on the edge here is still pretty icy and crusty. This just came in yesterday. And so it was outside in the cold. But if I go a little further, Maybe you can see the steam starting to pick up. And that is the compost about four feet into the structure. 
steaming. It's probably about 80 degrees Fahrenheit, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Lots of worms. I'm in about well, the halfway point. So this is compost that's had about a week or two in here and has been built up. And let's see what we got. So it's warm. And what's nice is there is seeds all throughout. And so those have been sprouting. The thing is, whatever amount of red wigglers we had in the system coming into the fall, whoop, we're now not going to really be generating, seeing many more happen. So whatever they get, they get. So we have to preserve the ones that we can find to some extent, but also let the hens have some. It's a, it's a balancing act. I'll take a look outside. There's actually some caches out there of some really good healthy populations that I might try to get set up to come into this high tunnel. I know it's a mess. I mean, the milk crates, you know about those. If you watch this channel, they're all over the place. Winter is kind of a time for things to fall apart a little anyway, but uh, I identified this area. This is where we were bringing in food scraps back in the summer. So is that area. And these were areas just incredibly rich with red wigglers coming into the fall. And so we tried to do is add a bunch of seed you can still see some on top um, to be able to sprout in there and feed the worms and then added some mulch. And as cold as it is out here, this is kind of crazy to see. Bear with me. The hens know it too. There are still lots of red wigglers in here. But unlike the summer, I can't play this game all day where I dig in, reveal them, and let the hungry hens wail on every last worm. We could erase or we could really deplete the worm population very, very quickly this way. So they get to have some fun for a moment, but really obligation is for me to dig in to some nearby wood chips and cover that back up, both to keep the hens a little bit out and also insulate the area. They'll dig a little, but they won't get every last one. But what I might do is set up the tripod and film some of this, is move some of this incredibly red wiggler wit rich, <laughs> say that 10 times, um, red wiggler rich context from here, queued right up to the front of the winter run, and then get it really banked in leaves and wood chips so that as we dump food scraps there, we might be able to keep red wigglers happy uh, to some extent through the winter, but these lenses of healthy populations of worms. I know there's a good one here. There's a really good one here. There's a really strong one at the beginning of the fence line where we dumped all the black walnut husks and put wood chips on top. Those are pretty precious to us. Those are the inoculant to get red wigglers up and running next year. So I don't want to mess with that and dig too hard in. Before I do that, I'll mention some other quick things. We've been making a huge amount of charcoal in our wood stove. Talked about this in other videos. We use uh, stainless steel hotel pans. Works just so incredibly well. Uh, there'll be black walnut husks and little chunks of wood and bone and pine cones that we uh, extract heat from in our wood stove and mix that into this, this system. We put in a few hundred pounds of charcoal and we're opening up some leaf bags. So we're getting some really serious carbon deposition all through the winter as well. That is so important to always be adding, even in the winter months. And for some food security for our hens, we worked out a lovely trade with an organic farmer friend of mine down the way to get around a thousand pounds of organic grain. And now we've got every single one of these containers, believe it or not, filled just about to the brim with good dried seed. We use a nursery marker to mark on top so we know what we're going for. So that's all oats, there's corn, there's wheat, there's a couple uh, random brassica, I think some sort of field mustard. But anyway, wherever you live, make uh, calls and connections. Are there local farmers or regional farmers that do grain at scale? Can you trade something with them or simply buy uh, to be able to get lots of grain to sprout? Hello, Mrs. Tiny Lady. That's one of our tiny ladies. <laughs> it's funny because part of the trade with this is um, it was a, you know, get your own grain. And so Juan and I went into this huge dark 
barn area and I had to climb up into the grain uh, silos or the, the grain tractors and then haul it out and Juan loaded it into burlap sacks and we brought it back here. There's a whole production but we should be good until probably May or June or onward with the amount of seed that we have to sprout for these hens. So well worth the effort to be sure. It is definitely sled season for moving compost and materials at this point. Each scoop of the really rich half compost material over here can be covered with some wood chips to get the ratios right, to also protect the worms a little bit. It's that balance, right? We want the chickens to have some fun and pleasure and nourishment, but also keep the populations from plummeting too quickly with the red wigglers. The cold does a great job of preserving. These are all buried food scraps from probably a week or two that we dumped and today's really the day to do this. Things are just above freezing. I don't want to do this on a day that's 10 degrees. Well, it's less comfortable to do this on a day that's 10 degrees and also the worms being exposed to that sort of cold, even just for a minute or two, probably kills them. So we do it on little days, little windows like this, let the chickens have some fun, cover it back up with insulation, and whenever possible, throw some seed into the mix so that always, 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 there's extra seeds getting folded into both food scraps, worm castings, and wood chips that can be sprouting throughout this pipeline. It's part of the reason why we want so many seeds is that we can then afford to include sprouts at every single level. But let me go get this dumped and covered. It's not the most beautiful treatment, but it's really functional. And for a real cold climate like this, to be able to have systems where there's active, warm, sprouting seeds, there's fresh greens, there's red wigglers, uh, it works pretty nicely. It's very, very low cost. The leaf bags that we cash in the fall, we could have stored these better, that's definitely sure. But we can dump their contents on top of piles of compost, on food scraps, and then throw the bags on top put a little weight, either snow or ice or frozen compost or thawed compost, and that preserves, it's like little caps on top. And we've also put full leaf bags on the edges as a little bit of an insulative layer. But again, it's that balance of not wanting to block it so far off, you know, best performance for compost would be we cover all of this so that the chickens can't get any of it, preserve 100% of the heat, but then they get no food. So. It's that balance, and we just are always trying to continually find that. But here you can see, here's some frozen compost, lots of seeds. Challenge here, since these already started sprouting, they may now be killed, but once they thaw out, the chickens can still get some good food value. The sweet spot is dried seeds folded in uh, to moist compost that's getting warmer and warmer so that it can really sprout and get ropey in there. Let's see if we can find some. really consistent and simple pattern in this high tunnel is always digging from the middle 
up and onto the sides. Nice big pile. Let them tumble it back down. You can see that in action. This will be flat by the evening. And some areas are frozen, some are piping hot. They kind of equalize, they kind of trend towards warmer and warmer, especially if the ratios are right. And the hens have a pretty neat time in here. So from Arctic tundra to warm, steamy composting system. The infrastructure for this, not too complex. Certainly more refinement could be larger. All sorts of things could be easier and nicer in life, but we're working with it the way it is. The hens don't seem to mind, they're not very tall, so it works out for them. As we anticipate colder and colder weather, that's generally the flow, is just bring more and more volume tighter together. As we get hotter into the summer, we want to spread it out. Way more surface area, way more dissipation of heat. And in the winter, way more concentration, higher volume to surface area ratio. Insulation in the form of whatever is biodegradable on the outside. I know to a lot of folks' eyes, this looks like a trash pile, and that's completely fine. I get that. But this is actually, along with that, a very functional feeding system for a whole bunch of hens that provide us nourishment and an active composting pipeline, which in a frozen northern climate is not too easy to come by without fossil fuels or other sorts of kind of falsifying input. So it's a pretty integrated system that works well. I'd love to hear if you've got questions or concerns or comments and let us know what you're doing to have happy and healthy hens through tough times in winter. I'll probably quit here on the video and focus on five or ten more sleds worth of bulking insulative carbon and a little bit of seed and then once we get into the real cold snap we'll just focus entirely on the inside so it's comfortable for us and comfortable for the hens. We'll share notes if we get around to putting this carport thing up and over. What that looks like that would be a huge upgrade for sure. And thanks for watching. Stay warm out there.